for anyone that doesn't kind of get a chance to listen to the long conversation we had about your dad before, I mean, the reason we we connected in the first place was this beautiful kind of afterword you wrote in um, Dynamite and Davy, Stephen Bell's book. And um, that really hit home to me when I read it again recently, because I've just um, recently written words to my dad. So it's been about a year now since I lost my dad. And I found it really cathartic. I don't know if they're ever going to be published, those words, and if I'll ever do anything with them, but just the act of getting them down and Absolutely. telling them how I felt has helped me a lot. Like, how, how was it for you? Like, when you wrote them, did you did you anticipate that one day they were going to kind of be in this book, or did you? Uh, there it is. Um, so I did, did write that particularly for that book. Um, and because when my dad passed away, I was two months pregnant. And so, of course, there's a risk of flying. I'm in Calgary and, you know, my dad was in England. So, and it would be short notice. I wouldn't be able to take my family, like, you know, because it's very expensive. So I didn't want to put that stress on my body, a new pregnancy, um, to, to go to the funeral. So what ended up happening was my cousin actually FaceTimed me at the funeral, which was really, really nice and amazing. And I'll always appreciate and remember that he did that for me I could hardly hear a thing but it was still you know at least I was kind of there yeah um so anyway so when Stephen asked me to write something in the book I kind of used it as my opportunity to like what I would have said if I was at the funeral like my yeah my speech kind of thing so so it was very very healing for me and um I still talk to my dad like if I need things to get things off my chest or whatever I'll just speak to him. I speak to him all the time. I don't really pray to God or anything like that. I pray to my dad. So yeah, he's always there and he's always dropping dimes. I found a dime yesterday. I find them everywhere. Like so much so that I'm like, oh, did this just fall out of my wallet? Was this just, but my sister's like, no, Bronwyn, like when you Mm -hmm. find them, they're dead. Like that's how much he's leaving them. I find them all the time. And so does my sister and so does my mom. Yeah, I mean, I've I've planted a tree since since losing my dad, and that's my little spot where I sit outside every morning and have a coffee and have a quick chat to him. I think it's a really healthy way of processing it because the you know then the family they don't gone, they're just not here anymore, but they're still very much around. I'm sure when you were doing that speech at the spec mm-hmm. at the spectra, I'm sure he was there listening to every word. Like I, I'm a big believer that these people, you know, we're not left behind by our loved ones; they're just somewhere else. We'll see them again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. 